Hello lovely people, today we'll be reviewing a software called Choir. Well, I think it's called Choir or Query. I don't know, um, but <laughs> it is an application that is trying to be a project management software and maybe you'll come into this review because you're curious about it and want to know more. Uh, we're going to give you an overview of some of the functions, features and whether it's worth your time in this video. Welcome everyone, my name is Francesco. If you're new here, do check out Toolfinder, which will be linked below. Uh, we dive into productivity tools and software to help you find the best ones. So if you're in the hunt for a project management software right now, do check out plenty of our resources below, which will be linked. Um, but we got uh, Quire in front of us. I'm just gonna call it Quire for this review. And we're gonna start with the pricing. Now, it's very interestingly uh, priced. I've gone to the build monthly. It's slightly cheaper on the yearly plans, but largely, uh, there is a free plan which has a generous amount of features as well as a professional plan which unlocks more of the timeline table calendar um, the sort of more advanced features that you typically get there's also a premium and enterprise pricing that will give you an outline uh, and all of these have limitations to how often and um, how much you can use each one so a very interesting pricing this is really designed for small teams i would say um probably up to 50 at maximum i've been looking at a couple of these apps like upbase and choir they're quite similar in nature so let's have a little look so i created an area here let me just zoom in a little bit more and as you can see you can create a list um, but you can create these sub lists and this is where the real magic comes into with choir so if i press sub list um what it's going to do is prompt me on what that list is called and that's built from the same list that you've been working on here. So it's almost like you have a main database list, then you can create these sub views that really just expand uh, what you've already got. So what I can do is I call this one uh, reviews um, and just keep it at reviews, but you can have a multitude of different viewing options. Uh, for example, there's a board view and you can choose whether you want to exclude or include the tasks in this subtask. So for example, you can actually exclude the selected tasks in nature and I'm gonna go and press create. Now, as you can see, it's empty because I kept that view um, a little bit separate, which is great because that's what I quite like about this is because you can sort of build your own views and you can move stuff about a little bit like an outliner application in a note taking space. Um, and if I go to reviews, it's sort of that whole separate experience. And I can add a task here, like uh, let's say I need to review AkiFlow. And I can add um, some attributes, as you can imagine, per task by clicking into it. And I can do a few things like pinning it, expanding it, adding an assignee, in this case it's me, adding a due date for tomorrow, and some relative stuff like that. Now here I can see how much time I spent in it by actually adding an estimate of how I think I would it would take, how long I think it would take me. 45 minutes in this case uh, would be a indication of how long I think it would take. And uh, you can see a breakdown there and keep track of it. Now, as you can see, um, there's a few bits here, like for example, uh, you can snooze it. I think peekaboo snooze it. You can add subtasks to it and more, as well as zoom into the task, which will allow you to have this full screen view, uh, which is quite nice. And you can add attachments, use comments and things you'd expect with most project management softwares. I've actually just accidentally just created something there. But you can also go ahead and create statuses. So if you wanted a middle status like negotiation, if I spelt that right and press save, and you can see the progression of each of the stages. So for example, in this case, it could be 24% of the progress of the project. And you can even change it up. So this status is 76% once it's in progress and you get a bit of a better indication of how a project really operates. Now you can change this into a load of different views, but I want to show you that you can group by assignees. So if I see stuff uh, that is assigned to myself, um, uh, it's because I'm inside of the project. Here we go. If I go out, I can see that this is assigned to myself. Found a few of these little bugs. Maybe it's because I'm in this zoomed in view. I'll give them credit if, no, that's weird. It's still coming up as a little bit of a sort of a messy uh, like layout here. Um, but I can group by tag as well if I have any tags, priority level if I have any, and you can add priority uh, to each of your different items as well here. Now you can add uh, an issue tracker as well, which is great. Um, now what I want to show you next is, is really uh, just there's the priority indicator. So if I did uh, want to have this grouped by all tasks 
and grouped by priority, then there you go. So ah, so I've I'm actually creating sort of a subgroup here, which is quite cool in terms of breaking it down even further. And I can move stuff between certain areas as well. So that's obviously because I'm um, stuck on the sort of uh, the uh, natural view here uh, for managing the status. Now, if I want to, I can shuffle these boards around and organize them by priority. So that's how you go about doing it uh, by assignee and uh, naturally by tags, which I don't have any. But this is a nice view because you can change things up in the board view. There's also a task bundle feature, which I think if you have any subtasks as part of it, sort of like keeps things a little bit easier. Now you can hide empty columns as well, which is quite nice, um, nice feature. And you can switch to the regular list view, which it goes back to what it looks like at the start. And you can also, um, if, if I go into this view, I can also have it as a uh, board view. Um, and I can also have it as a, uh, here we go, what's this one? This one's almost like a, uh, a table type view. And finally, I can have it as a timeline based view. So this is good as like a Gantt chart. I wouldn't say it's going to give you the abilities that you would expect inside of something like um, Gantt Pro. Uh, but it definitely is a little bit easier on the eye in terms of getting started. There's also a calendar view. Um, I actually found out that you can do this on week view and day view. Week view here. So if you wanted to see um, a, a certain task and even be able to bring it into the system, that's quite a nice way to do so. Um, and also, if you want to add a uh, add a task up here, you can do. So if I want to press T, I can say uh, uh, review uh, choir and I can move this one about. And if I click right into it, I can see the importance for the priority level and I can even set the status as well in the background and assign it to. So this is quite a nice view because you can change it by what the priority is seen uh, by the outset, which is quite nice. So if I go to status, it should so show that one orange because I set the negotiation as orange. Then I can see a timesheet of how I'm um, progressing with the project largely. Now, there is an overview area which gives you an indication of how the project's going. as uh, It allows you to add a description and uh, allows you to see stuff uh, in a bit more detail. Now, just a note, you can actually um, have the My Task view. So if you have anything assigned to you, for example, in this case, I've got the Aki flow assigned to me. I can see it and I can organize it in my own way that I see fit. So, for example, if I was like, OK, I'm going to plan this week and remove weekends um, and I want to be able to see what's on my calendar, then you can create your own setups and you can create your own sub lists as well. You can also have that set to only you. So largely, let's see, you can add more projects if you did want to. And as you can see, uh, there are a few uh, templates, obviously your own ones uh, that you can get started with. There's no like templates that you would get from other applications. Um, and up here, you can also change your appearance. You can also go into account settings and manage a few things that you'd expect. There's abilities like a Slack notification and email into Quire, which can be quite helpful. Uh, and you can also add one apps from this, the Quire app directory. So for example, if you use Google Calendar, then you can bring in tasks, uh, sync your tasks with your Google Calendar, which will allow you. And there's also a bunch of other Quire integrations, mainly with Google and Microsoft. I can't really see, uh, these are the popular ones, but there are more in terms of like box. So you can build the integrations with uh, commenting and things like that. Um, but largely, this application is a very interesting one. I tell you why, because what it does very well is it helps you to organize your tasks, but not in like a traditional project management sense. You won't get like dashboards that you would get in other project management softwares. You won't get, um, I don't know, like advanced ways to schedule your team more effectively. But what you're getting here is flexible views in a very not clean, minimal application. It's not, it wouldn't win a design award, but it certainly has functionality. There is some good, powerful functions behind each of the views, which is nice, and it's very customizable. So I would probably recommend it more for those smaller teams that are looking for customization, but don't really go beyond the ability to have advanced project management setups. I would say this is much lighter in nature, almost like a very advanced to-do list for a team. 
uh, as a whole. But it's very impressive to see some of the features. As I said, the pricing plans actually fairly reasonable for individuals um, because like I feel like that is actually quite a nice tool for individuals. The mobile app, you get iOS and Android app is good. Like, it's not the nicest to look at, but it works. Um, and I think even for individuals through calendar use, um, the time tracking and a thing like task dependency, Pomodoros, which I didn't even get to touch on, uh, is actually a very nice feature as well as timeline views. And at a fairly reasonable price per user per month. If you go build annually, it gets a lot more cost effective. Um, and as you can see, the schedule view, I didn't actually see this one inside of the account. Um, I guess it's um, as part of this view. Let's just see. Um, I ah, There we go, schedule view. I, I do have schedule view. And that's quite a nice way to see because you can see a whole team and what the whole team's working on on what day, which I think is quite a nice feature. That's obviously tucked under the um, premium, which is a lot more expensive in terms of the pricing. So I would probably say this is best more for smaller teams that are looking at a task management approach to their project management um, and that want a, a range of custom views don't really care what an app looks like because this isn't the best looking app in my opinion, but largely an interesting one that allow you to organize yourself and your team. It sort of reminds me of a project management software combined with an outline tool like Workflowy and if you, if they had a baby, uh, because I feel like that's one. Apparently 100,000 team, teams use it, so it seems like quite a, um, a popular resource out there on the market. So, folks, hopefully you enjoyed this review. Hopefully it gave you an idea of Quiet and whether it's suitable for you. Let us know if you have any questions and I will help you with them uh, a little bit further. So thank you very much and I'll talk to you all very soon. Cheerio.